Hello everyone, welcome back to another model railroading video. Today we're going to take a look at another Cato N scale track set, and the one I have today is the V1 track set. This is the main lane passing siding set, and what we're going to do is we're going to just take a look at what's inside, and then we're going to test it out with the layout, and then I'll show you guys how I'm actually going to use this because I'm not actually wanting a passing siding on my layout. I'm actually gonna use it for something else. All right, so first impressions on the box. It looks very nice, very typical for a Kato track set box. We have the uh, green and red sort of uh, color scheme on there and uh, almost everything except for a few select Things are in Japanese, so I can't read most of this, but it gives you the basic information. Um, anyway, so what we get in this set are two switches, uh, some correcting curves, uh, some small straights, and a few long straights. And then when you put it with the track, it should have this siding for uh, if you want a train to pass or whatever, or you want to store some uh, freight cars right there. Uh, taking a look at the back, yeah, it just shows you a bunch of other track sets you can get. There's the V1 right there, which is actually very similar to the V4, which I also took a look at. And I think the only difference is that they're just... I mean, it's obvious what the difference is, but the V4 has the track uh, sort of closer together than the V1 does. Um, and we flip it around to the other side. It looks like the V1 might be used for if you have a station to put in between the two tracks. And then there's this weird sticker that I found on the top of it. Uh, says, keep away from small children. This film may cling to nose and mouth and prevent breathing. Bag is not a toy. I don't know exactly why it has that sticker. This is not a bag. This is a box. Uh, that's kind of silly in my opinion. Maybe there's a bag inside of it. I don't know. We'll see. And then there is some tape keeping it closed. So I'll just use the knife to open it up. And while I'm sort of getting it out of the box, I guess I should tell you... Um, a few more things. I bought this off of Amazon for about $64.88. Um, everywhere else was a little bit more expensive. So I'd say, um, Amazon is probably the best place to get this right now at the time of recording. Uh, and then it also just, it depends. You have to sort of look around for the best price. Uh, Amazon, Train World, uh, eBay, uh, a few places I get my train stuff from, and yeah, it can vary from various places. Anyway, we have it out of the box now, and we have some instructions to teach us how to use our track, which I'm not going to need. Actually, what is this? Uh, we... Yeah, I'm just gonna set that to the side. I'm not too interested in this. Uh, you can probably look at it if you get one of these. Uh, anyway, let's look at what we're actually interested in, which is the track. So, it looks like we have the switches here. Um, some very gradual switches, as you can see. And we can manually switch it with this lever. I guess it's not a lever, it's a switch. Which is very handy because I don't want to use the electrical system. And then we have these short pieces of track. Uh, pretty standard, nothing too special about it. We have these very gradual curves which are supposed to um, come off of the, what is it, the switch, 
and sort of straighten it out so that it's parallel with the track it's uh, connected to. And then we have a bunch of long straights and there are one, two, six. There's a total of six in there. And so we'll have to see how that all goes together. And then with every electrical turnout that you get with Kato, you get one of these if you want to use the electrical system. So that will set it to straight. That will set it to curve. There's the connector right here. That connects to the wire that goes to the switch. And then uh, the sort of system that Kato uses is these plugins that go into the side of your Kato controller. Uh, I'm not going to showcase that because I'm not going to be using the electrical system, but it should be pretty simple and straightforward to use. And I've tested it before and it works great. So, yeah, I think we should just go ahead and set it up with the layout and see how it works. All right, let's do a cool little transition here. We'll see how good my editing skills are. Uh, snap. So I did have to rearrange the track a little bit and sort of leave some parts of it out because the V1 is actually quite long. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be. And so there are some gaps in the track. I'll just pick up the camera here and show you. I just left out this whole section right here. And then over here we have some more gaps, and then the rest of it is pretty much complete. So I just have the outside oval uh, in a full circuit so that we can just test it out like this. Because I'm not planning on using it in this way. Um, my intention is to use it in a different way, which I'll show you later, possibly in a different video. Well, anyway, let's get a train pulled out and use it to test out the siding and see kind of what we are dealing with here. Uh, for today, I think I'm going to use my GS4 to test it out. Uh, this is my favorite locomotive. It's also my largest locomotive, so we'll definitely test out the uh, tightness of the curves. Pull out some cars as well to test that out. All right, there we go. All right. I will be back once I have this set up. Okay, so now I have the camera set up to see the V1 track set. And I have my daylight passenger train running around the circuit. And for the first test, we're just going to see how it does going straight through it. And it, it should do it pretty easily. There's nothing really difficult to do. And then I want to see how it does uh, turning into the siding. Uh, these curves do actually look a little bit wider than the mainline curves I have going around in the circuit. So it should be pretty easy for the daylight to navigate these curves. Yep, it makes it, oh, we have a little bit of an accident. Okay, got it back on the track. All right, something else I also want to test out is, um, I'll just show you in a second once I have it in the siding. But we're gonna bring the locomotive all the way into the siding with all the passenger cars. It barely fits in there. But now what I want to do is I want to see if I switch these, so that they're not in the same direction as the locomotive. I want to see if it'll still put power to it when it's not open. And I'm getting power right now. See, it's not doing anything. So, yeah, it won't have power when the switch isn't in the same direction as the locomotive. So, 
that is good to know. Um, so what this means is that you could technically have another locomotive running on the straight while you have another locomotive in the siding, as long as you don't have those points switched uh, to where the locomotive is, which is very interesting. I wonder how this would work with DCC, but I'm not exactly sure because I don't have a DCC system. Um, just the standard DC. Anyway, oh, and that makes me curious to see if this also is true for going on the straight. Here, let me bring it around. All right, I have it coming into the straight right now. Bump the bump the power. Okay, I'm gonna have it stop right between the points. All right, now let's switch it to the curve and see if it'll give power to it. And yep, it's not, it's not receiving the power I'm giving. So yeah, if you sort of cut off the uh, pathway of the locomotive uh, from the power, then it kind of just won't go. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I wonder why they did that. And uh, again, I wonder how this would work with DCC instead of just DC. So, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it for the V1 set. It's pretty standard. Um, just a siding and you can put a station in between.